Hi, my name is Richard Thornley, the IB Chemistry Review Guide. And today we're going to look at detecting ethanol in the blood, urine and breath, which is D4.3. So the IB wants you to know five ways to measure alcohol in the body. So in the blood and urine, that's chromatography. Uh, from the breath, you can use a fuel cell, uh, an intoximeter based on infrared spectroscopy, or what I have here, which is uh, acidified dichromate. So this is a breath alcohol detector, and it contains acidified dichromate, probably on plastic beads. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and uh, see if it works. Well, there's a helicopter going by. So I've got some very cheap coconut rum. And I'm going to pour it into here. Now I'm not going to get drunk, I'm just going to swirl it around my mouth to try and give me elevated alcohol levels. Uh, I am of age. Just show you my driver's license. There we go. And I did also have hair previously. And you can see I am qualified to drive motorbikes and milk floats or, and other electric cars. Never did learn to drive proper cars. All right then. So. Which end do I blow into? This end here. I'm going to swill this rum around my mouth. I'm not going to swallow it because it's morning. Oh, oh, nothing happened. I'm going to try again. I'm going to try with a new glass. Just pause a sec. I think I've just worked out why it isn't working. It seems to be in an enclosed capsule there. I wonder if I have to break the capsule so that the chemicals can get in. I'm gonna try that. If that does work, then I will recommend this. Ah, the capsule broke. Okay, let's try again. for science. Now you could say that that's turned a little bit green. I'll go for a little bit green there. All right then, so it's a couple of minutes later and it has definitely turned green. Uh, I think the lesson there is to read the instructions before you try these things. And by the way, I, I didn't want to have flowers here. I wanted lasers, uh, but the wife wanted flowers. So alcohol impairs your ability to think straight and drive. So why are we measuring alcohol levels? Well, ideally we measure alcohol levels in the brain. That's where it really counts. But we can't really take a spoonful of brain out and measure alcohol levels there. So uh, there are five ways the IB wants you to know. The first way is with the breathalyzer, which is what I just demonstrated. The chemical equation is ethanol goes to ethanol and maybe some ethanoic acid as well. Now don't forget the square brackets with the O to show oxidizing agent which was acidified dichromate if you remember correctly and it was orange and it went green so the dichromate is orange and the chromium 3 plus that's produced is green. So the more green there is the more alcohol there is in your breath and probably in your brain. Number two and number three. This is a blood and urine test. So this is hard to do on the roadside. You have to go to the police station or somewhere to get that tested for. So I'm gonna draw a coily tube. I'm not gonna tell you what this is called yet. So there's a tube and then you get either the blood or the urine turn it into a gas and push it through this tube 
Now in the tube already is a, a liquid layer. So you'd think it couldn't go through, but it does go through. They heat it up, they put some high pressure behind it, and the gas will go through the tube. Now after a certain amount of time, ethanol, and only ethanol will come out at a certain time from this machine. So uh, then you measure that. And it's called a GLC. So after a certain amount of time, the alcohol will come out. Now what does GLC mean? What well, gas, liquid, a chromatograph. That's the name of the, the readout that you get. And it's a gas liquid chromatography machine. Number four is an intoximeter. There are two sorts of intoximeter you need to know how to use, or the theory behind them. Uh, the first is an infrared absorption intoximeter. It works on the carbon-hydrogen bond that's present in alcohol. Let me just draw out an extremely simple schematic of an intoximeter. So infrared light of a certain wavelength will be absorbed by the carbon-hydrogen bond in alcohol. So if I breathe through there, through the machine, what the machine's going to do is it's going to compare the light that hits Y with the light that hits X. Now the carbon-hydrogen bond in the alcohol absorbs some of this infrared radiation. Now if X equals Y, if the light's the same at both places, there's no alcohol in your breath. Well, you should be able to see where this is going now. If uh, X is smaller than Y, then some light's been absorbed by the alcohol. Okay, then there's alcohol present in your breath. So more absorption, more alcohol. And finally, five is another intoximeter. This time it's based on the fuel cell. So we have our good-looking guy blowing into this sort of intoximeter. And it has a catalyst and a thermometer. That's very simple there. Probably a hot catalyst and a thermometer there. Now alcohol is a fuel and if you have alcohol present on your breath, when it hits the hot catalyst it will oxidize to make carbon dioxide and water. And that's exothermic. So ethanol in the breath undergoes catalytic oxidation and that produces energy, produces heat. So if you measure this energy and then you have an idea of how much alcohol is in the breath. The blood and urine test is the most accurate of all of these. 